Hey guys, it's Chris. Uh, you might know me as CTMAL um, on the forums, uh, the OIC forums. Um, I just thought it might be good to run through a, uh, a bit of a tutorial on uh, setting up plugins and add-ins uh, for Vixen. Um, I'm not a programmer, so this is uh, probably geared towards uh, more of the people who aren't programmers. Uh, so we'll be basically going, going into detail on each little section. Um, although I'm not going to be going into details on how to program in C sharp, um, but hopefully this will this will basically start a uh, pretty good basis. So uh, it'll help you get started, kind of kind of speed up the, the learning curve uh, for you. Um, basically, I found out all this information just by going through and uh, struggling and getting lucky every once in a while and finding out what I needed to find. Um, so. Hopefully, uh, you don't have to go through all that. Um, so basically, what we're going to be doing, we're going to be making a, a an output plugin, uh, a simple plugin. I'll just show you. I have one made here. Um, what we have, it's just an example. You select which channel you want to listen to. Um, and then when you press play, it basically lists all the event values as it goes along. Um, it's not a very involved uh, plugin. Um, don't know how much use it is in real life, but um, should be a pretty good platform to uh, to run through some of the information. Um, and even though this isn't uh, going to be covering much, I'll try to try to add any any little details or or aids um, as I go along. Um, this is my, also my first tutorial, so uh, if it's a little bumpy ride, just bear with me. Um, okay, open up a Visual Studio Express. I'm using 2010. It's free. You can just download it from Microsoft site. Um, go ahead and open a new project. Uh, we're going to be making a DLL file. All, all plugins and add-ins, etc., are DLL files that get copied to the uh, Vixen uh, folders. Um, make sure class library is highlighted. Go ahead and give your plug in a name, click OK, and it will create um, it will create your workspace for you. Uh, in this first step, we're just going to run through um, setting up the workspace. Um, I'll be doing multiple parts. Um, each part, I'm, I'm hoping to be around 10 minutes or so. Uh, that way I can post them up on YouTube. Um, I'll also be uh, starting and stopping this. I'm running on a really slow computer, so um, if it seems a little jittery, that's that's why I'm just trying to cut down a little bit on the time. Um, first thing I usually do is just rename the class that's automatically named. Uh, the name class one isn't very descriptive, so you can name it whatever you want. Uh, I'll just name it Output Plugin. Um, it's going to ask, do you want everything uh, that was named class 1 to be changed? But yes, we do. So it changes that name right there. Um, the next thing we need to do is we need to make sure that it is using uh, .NET 2.0. Um, I'm sure by now a lot of people out there have multiple versions of .NET. Um, and it's probably not going to default to .NET 2.0 because it's an older version. So in order to do that, we just uh, we save it save our project go down and click save all um, and now we can go in and change the settings uh, go to project and then tutorial properties and once that comes up now you're gonna see this is the target framework we're set up right now for for dotnet 4 which we don't want to use you can use dotnet uh, Three or 3.5 for uh, Vixen plugs, plugins if you would like. Um, .NET 4 will not work. Vixen doesn't see them. So um, that's just a warning out there for that. Um, another thing I usually change right off the bat um, when you change that, it, it had to close the solution. So you can just double click on output plugin and it'll bring it back up again. Um, <clears throat> go back into properties. Now instead of ha uh, we're going to be building this a lot, um, just to kind of 
follow what's going on as we're doing it. Um, and it's kind of a pain. If you build it to a project folder, then you would have to go copy the DLL, copy it into the uh, Vixen directory. Um, so what I like to do is just change the output path of the uh, the DLL file that it's going to be building, um, and I change that to my Vixen directory. Um, one thing I also do is I always set up, uh, especially when I'm playing around like this, um, set up a test uh, Vixen folder so that um, <clears throat> I'm not messing around with anything that could possibly end up on our show computer. Um, so we need to just put out, put the output to the output plugins folder. Uh, click OK. That'll change that. Now when we build it, it'll automatically go into Vixen, and then we can just open up Vixen and and test it. Um, so we're almost done setting up our workspace here. Uh, next thing we have to do is set up our references. Um, You'll notice a bunch of these have exclamation points next to them. That was because this project, when I opened it up, it was defaulting to .NET 4.0, and we knocked it down to .NET 2.0. Uh, so these are no longer valid. So you can go ahead and get rid of them. Just right-click on it and click Remove. Uh, do that for all the ones with the exclamation points. Okay, they're removed. And you'll also see a little squiggly line under here. Um, that is no longer valid in 2.0, so you can get rid of that line also. All right, so you you got your basic setup here. Um, <clears throat> let's add references. Uh, what we need is we we need references to uh, Vixen. Uh, in order to do that, you right click on references, click add reference. You will get a pop up. What you need to do is browse to your uh, Vixen directory. Okay, it finally popped up. Uh, just go to your Vixen directory. You are looking for the Vixen exe file. Uh, all you need to do is point to that. We're going to be using uh, Vixen 2.1. Uh, there's only one real minor difference uh, making an output plugin for Vixen 2.1 and 2.5. So I'll explain that when we get to it. It's really not that big of a deal. Um, so highlight Vixen.exe, click OK. Uh, and as soon as that's ready, you'll have it in your references list. Another thing we're going to be using, we're going to be uh, using forms which in general most DLLs do not use forms so um, by default there's no reference to it so we're gonna add a reference to it uh, click on .NET um, and we're looking for system.windows.forms system.windows.forms click OK okay now we have that reference uh, <clears throat> now the final part to setting up the references is and this just saves a ton of typing um, you want to type use, using Vixen, uh, using system.windows.forms, and also using system.xml. We'll bring that later, so I uh, might as well just put it in now. And all this does, instead of every time you want to access something in Vixen, um, instead of saying, hey, look into Vixen for this, you can just go ahead and type it in and, um, Visual Studio will go ahead and find it for you. So let's stop the first part right there. Um, and then in the next part, we'll start diving in and, and actually getting the project going. Go ahead and save your project. Um, and we're basically ready to get started.